All right, here's the problem we're going to try to solve today, which is we have a, a, a population. Okay, it could be St. Charles University, it could be New York City, it could be the whole world, it could be the trees in the forest, it could be all the insects, whatever you're measuring. And let's make it the random number table because we know the answer before we start. And let's say somebody says, what is the average of that population? Which is a very typical question. Well, what's the average income of people? What's the average number of children? Average number of cars they drive? Whatever you, you know, what if you're, if you're a car manufacturer, you don't know how many cars they drive, how many, how many miles a year they drive. And the way we're going to solve the problem is by taking a sample from the population, because we recognize it's impractical to take the whole population. That's totally impossible. You take a sample. Usually the sample should be representative, you know, shouldn't be too small a sample because you want to have a chance to be representative of the whole population, but you don't want to make it too large either because it takes too much time to, to access that many people. Um, so let's do that. So let's say the population is a random number table, and let's say the sample size, while it's really unrealistically small, because it's really very easy to take 30 numbers or 100 numbers, since we have a lot of experience already taking samples of five numbers, which for those of you who did the spinner assignment, remember that, remember that. Let's take a sample of five. And we also have to you know the answer is 4.5, but let's make believe we don't know that. Okay? So in the case of the random number table, we want to know is the okay, let me maybe I think I left out a sentence what I should have told you to explain this. Somebody has a random number table in their in their book. Not our book, our book I have to actually verify it happens to have an average of 4.5. But make believe somebody has a new book that was just published. And for some reason, either they're a little paranoid or they're not a little cynical. Maybe, and in fact, believe it or not, the New York Times published an article several years ago that said that a lot of these random number tables are, in fact, wrong. So it's not, that's not so crazy to think maybe it's wrong. Somebody said, is my random number table truly have an average of 4.5? That's the question you're trying to answer. That's not just academic interest. You really want to know. But it doesn't have to apply to random number tables. It can apply to any population. So you know what the right answer is supposed to be. And you want to know, is my population the right answer or not? So one solution is to take a sample of numbers, and let's say we get an average. And if the average is exactly 4.5, for sure we prove, that we prove the answer is 4.5. But what if it comes out to, to 4.6? That's the question we have to struggle with today. In other words, if the, the average of your sample is close to the ideal answer, but not exactly the ideal answer, does that mean they're still going to say, I, you know, I believe the tables around the number table is good? So I'm going to ask this by, by going back to democracy again. Um, if you've got an average of 4.6 and you're trying to prove the average is really 4.5, how many people would say that 4.6 is pretty close to 4.5 and therefore I'm willing to accept the, the statement that the table is a pretty good table? Or how many people would say 4.6, even though it's close to 4.5 mathematically, it's still not 4.5 and mathematics would pretty much you know, require perfection. It's not 4.5 and therefore the, the guy who claimed his random number table is a good table is making a mistake or lying. It's not a good table. Those are the two choices. So let me take the second choice first. How many people feel that four point? Let me let me in fact, let me write this down as in the right terminology. Since this was stat one, I wouldn't be writing this down yet. But since it is stat two, and we're reviewing this, I'll remind you of the hypothesis testing procedure. We express the two possibilities, namely the average truly is four point five. Again, I'm using the Greek letter mu here, mu which is pronounced me in Greek, by the way, but it's like an M sound, and it's like a U sound, it's sort of a mixture. Uh, the mu, which is, all right, is 4.5 is one point of view. The other point of view is the average is not 4.5. There's only two possibilities. Either it's a perfectly good table or it's not a good table, which makes the whole chapter 9 and chapter 10 is so easy. There's only two possibilities, only like true or false. We call the other possibility the alternative hypothesis. This is called a null hypothesis. That's why the whole chapter is called hypothesis testing. We're testing between two different hypotheses. By the way, I call it HA. Some books call it HA, but Apple calls it what? Anybody remember? H1. H1. It's really H1. I don't know why I call it HA. H1 is the more traditional, but some books call it H1. It stands for the alternative hypothesis. And the more advanced statistician get H2, H3, you know, H0 and H1 is more than one. Alternative hypothesis. And what testing is one versus the other, simply a debate between two points of view, which guy's right? Now, the only way you can make a decision, there are two ways you can make a decision. One is by taking the whole population and figuring out the average, in which case you don't have any is issues, just simply look at the average. If the average of all 4,000 numbers in the back of the book came out to 4.6, that would clearly mean the table is not 4.5. 
But we don't have the time to take the all 4,000 numbers. All we have time to take is five numbers. That's the resources available to us for whatever reason. Or let's say you're measuring a very dangerous disease and you can only get five volunteers to take this new drug. So sometimes you do have to deal with a small sample size. Um, so the sample size came out to some average and make believe is 4.6. And the question is, is that back up this guy's point of view or back up this guy's point of view? Well, perhaps you want to tell me depends upon something else and you can't really answer yet. And that's, that's another valid option. So I'm going to let you vote. So the three votes you can give me are either vote for the H0, vote for the H1, or vote for I would like further information before I make my vote. So let's take the third one first. How many people require further information before they make a decision? Okay, what would you like to know about? You have to tell me what you want to know. <laughs> Just tell me what the meaning of life. What would you like to know about? <laughs> Maybe okay. I'll, I'll make your I'll, I'll make your life easy. Maybe for those you already had stat one, the things that you like to need to know about, which we're going to get into, but maybe to make you feel a little better. What is the sigma of the situation? What is the alpha, the you know the significance level, 0.05, and that other stuff? Maybe that's what you're thinking of. But we don't need to know that for more advanced. Right now, I'm looking at this. So maybe you never saw this before in your life, and you actually have to make a decision. So nobody has any further requests for information unless you have a good question. Oh, no. Now, so now the question is, how many people believe that the A0 of 4.6, since it's technically not 4.5, proves that the H1 guy is right by a show of hands? Anybody believe the H1 is right? OK. Three people so far. And how many people believe that the proof the A0 is right? No. It's about four or five people. Again, can't get everybody. All right, the majority believe in the A0. Now, for the people that, you know, hopefully it won't be putting you on, I should, maybe I should put people on the spot, but for the people that voted for the H1, with all due respect, people who usually vote for the H1 are people who haven't done the spinner assignment. Now, I'm going to ask you, the, have you done, no, not the whole spinner assignment, I won't, I won't embarrass you for that. I'm looking specifically for item number uh, four. Have you done number four yet? Actually, tell me the truth. Have you done number four? I've, I've like worked on it. Like I've been doing the. I just don't remember which one. Four is like the beginning. When you're picking five, you're picking two. You're taking five numbers, writing down the average, and yeah. other five numbers. And what about you? Did you yes. do number four? Yet? Okay. Who else voted for the H one? Anybody else? Who voted for, I think you voted for it. Did you do spinner assignment four yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, if, if you did it, well, if you did split an assignment number four, and which I'd like you to take out if you have, you should bring it with you because we've discussed it in class all the time. Go down the list of numbers. Now, let, let's take, let's make two assumptions. Let's make an assumption first of all that our random number table or the Excel where they're coming from, either way, is really a good part. Really does have an average of 4.5. If you took millions of, of you know, ran between, ran between, ran between, ran between, a million times and take the average, will come out to exactly 4.5. Let's assume that the, the, the equation is right that creates those random numbers. Yet, when you pick five numbers, you may get, you know, you're picking, you're going back to spinner assignment number four, and you pick five numbers, and the first time you do it, you got a 4.8, the second time you got it, you got a 4.2, the third time you got a 6.0, the fourth time you got a, a, a 3.6. The point is, you're getting five numbers all the time, and you're not getting 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, Aljo. You're not getting 4.5 all the time. I mean, I, I, I maybe, maybe it shows my age. I think personally, I'll when I'm, I'm talking to my kids, kids ask me an important question, and it's, I'm, I'm talking to them, and they're texting while I'm giving them the answer. I said, what are you, oh, I'm texting my friend about something else. I mean, how can you talk, anyway? You ask me a question, I'm giving you an answer. So I'm amazed how many people text while I'm talking. Okay. Um, so you're, if you've done the spinner sign, you realize the, the fact of the matter is that you're gonna get numbers that deviate 4. You're not getting 4.5. 4. For the people that claim they expect exactly 4.5 before they prove the H1 is, before they prove the H0 is right, it's not realistic. It's just not, that's not a practical approach because you'll never get exactly 4.5 unless you're totally, you know, unreasonably lucky. So the real answer is, and this is when we discuss today before I take your question, I'll answer it and go into more detail, that if the average is close to 4.5, which is how most of the class answered, I'm glad you already realized that, if this answer is close to 4.5, then you say, you know what, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to the A0 and say, here's a hard random number table, it's a good table. I understand that, because like, my number wasn't an exact 4.5. No, no, like, there are many numbers, there yeah. are 200 numbers. My question is, though, with the hypothesis testing, isn't it that why you have um, like less than or equal to, just so that you, just in case you don't get the exact 4.5 to prove that the HO is correct. Well, you're saying correct. In other words, the, the, maybe you maybe you just don't understand it. Maybe you maybe you're putting it in the, in the opposite direction. You, what you're saying is correct that if the average of your sample is average, 
Let, let, let me, without trying to answer your question, let me answer by just making a general statement. The, the, the central issue we're going to have to deal with 